Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Islam, the way of life here on Iqra Bangla. I'm your host, Abul Hasnat. Alhamdulillah, it's great to see you again. And I hope you've had a good week since we last saw you, inshallah. Before we do anything else, let's start like we always start our episodes with some Quran. Here we go. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وسيق الذين كفروا إلى جهنم زمرا حتى إذا جاءوها فتحت أبوابها وقال لهم خزنتها وقال لهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم رسل منكم يتنون عليكم آيات ربكم يتلون عليكم آيات ربكم وينذرونكم لقاء يومكم هذا قالوا بلى ولكن حقت كلمة العذاب على الكافرين قيل ادخلوا أبواب جهنم خالدين فيها فبئس مثوى المتكبرين وسيق الذين اتقوا ربهم إلى الجنة زمرا حتى إذا جاء فتحت أبوابها وقال لهم خزنتها وقال لهم خزنتها سلام عليكم طبتم فدخلوها خالدين وقالوا الحمد لله الذي صدقنا وعده وأورثنا الأرض نتبوأ من الجنة حيث نشاء فنعم أجر العاملين صدق الله العظيم Sadaqallahu al-Ali Razi, mashallah, subhanallah, we love the Qur'an as we always do and we should spend our rest of our lives loving and reciting as much Qur'an as possible. I'm, I'm going to introduce my guests because I've got some returning guests for me, but for those of you that weren't able to watch the last, year, uh, the last series that we did, I'll allow these guys to reintroduce themselves. So, my guests on the far side, when you're ready, please do salam to everyone nice and clearly, say your name and your age. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Suleiman and I'm nine years old. Thank you, Suleiman, who's nine years old. And my guest closest to me. When you're ready, do salam and your name and your uh, age, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Omar and I'm ten years old. I have Suleiman and Omar with me, who are nine and ten years old, respectively. And these two young men have been with me from the first series and they're back here for this series. So, alhamdulillah, great to have them back. I purposely put them in that order so I wouldn't call them Omar Suleiman. I'll call them Suleiman Omar, just in case. You got in Madhu up with someone really famous from America. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we are going to run our show like we usually do. What do we usually do? We talk about some prophet stories. We get, we got, we get my guests to do some Quran. We go into the seerah and we talk about the seerah and then we take the opportunity to watch some good deeds videos that you guys have sent in or that we uh, we've got in our catalogue of good deed videos and then we usually try games and this week these two young men have said that they want to challenge each other on this game which we played last two weeks we want to play it again called quick links so we're going to play quick links which has got this squeaky thing on and then we're going to look at some some quick quotes in this book Ramadan Mubarak and we're going to talk about these quotes and what they mean to us if we have time for all of this inshallah only Allah will permit the time, so that's where we're going to get started. Um, before I do, actually, let's just um, have a quick chat with my guests since the last time. So, um, 
Omar, you were a regular attendee in our last show. Um, what did you like most about what we did in the last series? So, two episodes... Oh, the last series. Yeah, so well, not, whichever. So not yeah. this series. Yeah, whichever. So, Which, I don't what, was your, what was your favourite activity? I don't remember anything from the last series. Oh, that, that's very it. helpful, Omar. <laughs> no <laughs> worries if you don't. Um, so, Omar, what was your favourite thing about these TV shows that you've been taking part in? Mostly, everyone's favourite is obviously the games. When you play at home, there's always the most... Things like you have fun with your families at home, yeah. but when you come together and play games, so if you don't have any games at home, you can come here and play games with us. And you've enjoyed playing here, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, good, good, good. And we play these games because we want you guys to, to have a look at how much fun we have here, and maybe you can do this at home as well, inshallah. So, yeah, absolutely. And I know I have, there's no, so Solomon was very honest, and why not? The games is the fun part. But inshallah, we hope you also learn from some of the stuff we do as well. Um, learn from the Sida. Uh, learn from some of the um, Quran stories we might talk about, or some of the prophets we talk about. Um, I've, I've got some, I, t I promised today with Omar and uh, um, Suleiman being my regulars, I promised I had some testing questions for them today. So I've got my book here called Awesome Quran Questions and Answers. And I'm going to tr try these two with them, see, see how they get on because they're regulars. Inshallah, I want to do some surah, so I'm going to go over to Suleiman. I'm going to get you to go first. So Suleiman's going to recite to us a surah, Inshallah. Suleiman, which one do you want to do for us today? Which one, which surah would you like to recite? A'la. Surah A'la, Inshallah. Suleiman's going to recite for us surah A'la. So Suleiman, when you're ready, I'd like you to start with the um, istiaza and the basmala, and then nice and clearly puff your chest up. Look into the camera and recite Surah Ala. Away you go. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sabbi ism al-Rabbika al-Ala al-Ladhi khalaqa fa-sawwa wal-Ladhi qad wal-Ladhi qaddara fa-hada wal-Ladhi khaja al-Mara'a faj'alu ghtha'an ahwa sadukri wa kafa la tansa illa ma shaa Allah innahu ya'lamu al-jahra ma yakhfa ونيسرك <تصفيق> MashaAllah, very hard to learn. Well done. You, you kept it going. Well done. And you, even if you think you're making an error, you kept going. And it's a brave thing to do to come on television and um, recite an entire surah. So well done, Sulaiman. Um, Omar, which surah are you going to do for us? Mudaffir, the Mudaffir. first 15 ayat. First 15 ayat of Mudaffir. Omar, when you're ready, start with Isti'aza and then Basmala. <coughs> and away you go. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها المدثر كن فأنذر وربك فكبر وثيابك فطهر وارجل فاهجر ولا تمنن تستكفر وليربك فاصبر فإذا نكر في الناكور فذلك يوم عيدي يوم ناسي على الكافرين خيسي زرني ومن خلقت وحيدا وجعلت معه مالا ممدودا وبنين شهورا ومحت له تمهيدا ثم يتمع أن أزيد صدق الله العلي ما شاء الله ورد الأمور and keep up the practicing because this is a good opportunity and you should practice as much as you can to well done. You're on that surah and you practiced it. Well done. Alhamdulillah. Right. We're going to go into the seerah, inshallah. Um, <coughs> last week. Omar, do you remember what we did last week? Last oh, I did with Khadija and Kaira, didn't I? Yeah. What did we do last week? You did like when the when the kids were throwing the rock the throwing the, the rocks at the prophet. Mashallah, yes, it was. That's where we got to. We do you know the name of the city, um, uh, Suleiman? Is it Bani Israel? No. Do you know the name of the city, Omar? Very good. We uh, the last part of the series we spoke about was the prophet went to Taif to attempt to 
started, started life there because he had no protection in Makkah. But unfortunately, it went very badly. And as Omar said, we spoke about how the kids threw stones at the Prophet and forced him by making him bleed out of Taif. And I said that there was an amazing dua that the Prophet made after he left Taif. And I will share that dua with you guys today, inshallah. That's what I want to do. I want to read this dua out. Um, so after, let's pick straight back up to the seerah. The Prophet and uh, Zayd ibn Haritha, they left Taif having had stones chucked at them and the bleeding so much the blood was in their shoes. And they went to a garden and then they, they sat in a garden. And this garden happened to be linked to one of the Quraysh. And in the garden there was a worker, a Christian worker called Adas. And Adas was there. We'll talk about Adas next time because I want to focus on this dua because this is an amazing dua. So, when the Prophet sallallahu escaped the mobs and finally found some shade to rest under, he began making the, one of the most profound supplications ever recorded. And this is how it is. O oh Allah, to you I complain of my weakness and my humiliation before men. You are the most merciful of all those who have mercy. You are the Lord of the humble and you are my Lord. To whom do you entrust me, O oh Allah? Asked the Prophet. To a stranger who receives me with hostility or to a close relative you have given power over me. As long as you are not angry with me, I don't care. But your protection is easy for me. I seek refuge in your face by which all darkness is illuminated and from which all affairs of this world and the hereafter are rightly guided. And may it never be that I incur your wrath or be subject to your anger. It is your right to criticize until you are content and there is no power nor strength except through you. This beautiful and profound Emotional du'a showcases a masterclass in how to converse with Allah. The Prophet ﷺ establishes the etiquette of complaining to Allah and how it differs from complaining to the other people. There are two types of complaint. The former is the essence of Tawheed, where, whereby one complains to Allah seeking refuge in him and hoping for his sympathy. As Prophet Yaqub ﷺ complained to Allah, and he said, I complain of my anguish and sorrow only to Allah, and I know from Allah what you know not. And the latter is to reject the will or the wisdom of Allah, questioning his decree and being upset with it. Um, right, I'm not going to go any more deeper into that, because I want to talk about that dua. Because that dua, for, you, for those of you that struggle to maybe understand some of the words to it, because its words are going to be hard. The dua is basically the Prophet saying that he's going... In, in summary, this is my view in summary, that he's going through such a hard time, but he knows that Allah has given it. And as long as Allah isn't angry with him, and Allah isn't annoyed with him, he's happy. So the rest of the world could be angry with him, because the kids chuck the stone at him at the time, and he's, there's nobody to protect him in, 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 in Makkah, and everything looks like it's falling apart. But if Allah is happy with him, he's happy with him. That is how amazing that dua is. And I want to turn to my two guests here. Omar. What do you think about that du'a? Have you ever had a time in your life, maybe, that you think that du'a is important? Tell me, share something. Yeah, that du'a would be good because Allah is basically more than the entire population of Earth. Yeah, and so Allah... So if He's happy with you, then, then like the entire universe is happy with you. What an amazing way. Well done, Omar. It's a beautiful way to do it. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't matter how many people... The whole world can hate you, but Allah loves you. That's more than enough, isn't it? Yeah. So, Duman, what do you think, young man? I mean, it's fair if you do something like... You see, people normally hate you. Somet sometimes people hate you. But, like, you should be happy with it because... You can see everywhere you go, Allah has made everything for us. Mm. Or sometimes, like, we destroy it, like the earth. Or we just, like, aimlessly do everything that harms nature, anything. Sometimes we just do things that are wrong, and then sometimes we get punishment, and sometimes we get reward from what, what we're depend depending on our act. Actions. So that's what I think of the dua. 
Very good. Oh. Very good. Thank you, um, um, Suleiman. That's beautiful. Yeah. And it's right. It's, I think, like you say, no matter what happens, appreciate. It's Allah's happy with you. Let the rest of the world hate you. If Allah is happy with you, then you, that's what the Prophet is saying. And the Prophet felt like that at that time. So, for those of you out there as well, mums and dads for that matter as well, um, if you feel that the world, you've got your back against the world, you think that nothing's going right, make that dua to Allah. Say to Allah, Allah, whatever it is that's happening, I accept it as long as you're not angry with me and as long as you're not annoyed with me. Subhanallah. Right, that was, um, honestly, that was a very filling dua for me and I hope you guys at home have felt this way. Right, uh, the next part of our show, which is uh, the boys' favourite show, is Games yeah. Time. <music> Suleiman and Omar wanted to compete with each other for Quick Links which we've done now, third week on the trot. So I've got to find a different game for next week. But yeah, we're going to play Quick Links. For those of you that are joining us in for the first time, Quick Links is a game where we've got some descriptive cards sitting here on the table. And I've got, I've got a pile of cards that are items or things, nouns. And when I pick them up, I will hold it up and I'll ask them to pick up a descriptive card word and link them. And then explain to me why they link. And if we if we like their link, we we approve it. We stay quiet. And if we don't like the link and we don't think it's a is um, the word link, then we will squeak at them. So Omar, that's your squeaker. Suleiman, that's your squeaker. Have you understood how to play this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you, if you think the words don't link, you squeak it. Otherwise, you squeak your opponent. Yeah. So the person explaining it, you squeak them. Otherwise, you um. Don't squeak and you approve it. And you use the bottom of the suction part to suck up a card, okay? So, we're gonna get, um, we're gonna get Omar to go first, yeah? So, yeah. Omar. The word I'm going to show you, I want you to find a linking word and explain to me why that word links with it. So the word is castle. Omar, find a word that describes castle. Almost taking his time, he's finding it very hard. Okay, sit back down, Omar. Omar found a card that would describe the word, or he thinks is linked to the word castle. Omar, what is the word that you've got? Ancient. Ancient and castle. Omar, explain to us why castle and ancient go together. Because there's not really that much castle right now, and usually, t and there was loads of castles in the past. So, ancient castles are now ancient, is that right? Yep. Suleiman, do we accept that? Hmm, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, I'm already get to keep that card. Suleiman, your turn. When you're ready, find a word that is linked to castle. Go! Can't afford the easiest one. Oh, well, you did take the easiest one. Suleiman's got a tough job to do. Pick one and... Fragile, no. Beautiful, no. And then you can, you no. can attempt. Fast. Ready? Oh, we're running out of time. Five, four, uh, no. three, two... <laughs> He's got one just <laughs> in time. Suleiman, sit down. Okay. So the word for castle, what's the word you've got, Suleiman? Elegant. Elegant. Okay. Suleiman, explain how castle and elegant are linked. Castles are very... Like some castles are gargantuan, some t some castles are an average size. Sometimes, sometimes when you go inside, it's like medieval times, and you see lots of gold. You see lots of pictures. You can see, you see lots of. Help me out, Solomon. Solomon, I'm I'm running out of time. Of why castle and elegant are related? Oh, uh, they're very. They've got lots of thrones, and therefore kings and queens. Which is that something elegant? That's a good point. Kings and queens. Are we going to accept castles being elegant? I'm not going to accept yeah. it. Oh my dear. I think castles, if we look at the Tower of London, which is a castle, it's not, I don't oh. think it's elegant. I think it's quite it's ugly on the outside. But you're right, inside, if you see a throne of a king and queen, that could be quite elegant. So, yeah, okay, fair enough. Well, let's that. have you have a card back. We're going to play one more card. We're going to do one more card and then we're going to move on to the Quran questions after that. So, yes. Oh, Suleiman, you can go first. The word that I want you to find a description for is the word car. Go. Oh, yeah. Suleiman, pick a card that describes car. Oh, that's an easy and one. And what do we do, Suleiman? Please don't you choose win. edible. 
Well, you don't want your car to be uh, eaten. Uh, nope, you don't want to eat your car. Solomon, what words have you got? I wish I could eat my car. What car did? What's the, what's the description you got? Very fast. Other side. <laughs> fast. Uh, Solomon, pick the word fast. Solomon, explain why car and fast go together. They're extremely fast. Quite easy, that one, isn't it? Uh, I, I know <laughs> Very easy. my next one. Omar, three, two, one, go. Mmm. <laughs> Right, you know why? Headlights. Headlights. Mm -hmm. Okay, Omar shows the word bright. Cars are bright because of the headlights. Oh, mm yeah, -hmm. I'm going to squeak him. We want to yeah. squeak him? Three, two, one. <laughs> we squeaked Omar because that means the car has to be driven at night. But you know what? You never know. You, you could have done a half squeak, like squeeze Half a squeak, bit. yeah. I think we're fair. We'll give Omar half a squeak. Like, right. Do it, but it doesn't make a sound like this. Okay, keep those oh. cards because you're not allowed to use those cards again. Omar, pick a card describe describe the word sweets. Go. Fresh. Omar has picked the word fresh. I'm interested by this. Why is fresh and sweets going together? Uh, some the sweets have like fruit flavor and fruits oh, yeah, are fresh. They do. It's a good link, but but it's a sweet. <laughs> but sweets are not fresh. Solomon, pick something that describes sweets. Go, go, go. Which one? Oh, oh I, I gave you an that. easy one. They're very hard. edible. They're very colourful. Edible. Fair enough. Let's get is it, is it? Solomon picks edible because no, sweets are very edible. Are you sure? <laughs> no. Yeah, we're sure. No, well done, guys. Right, that was a fun game. Okay, we are going to our last part of the um, of this episode. Really and do you know what? I've got I have a Quran question. So I think we leave Quran questions for another week. <laughs> I want to go into go back into these quotes, and um, quotes. I'm going to choose. This quote here from the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, verse 45. And seek help through patience and prayer. Seek help through patience and prayer. I want to spend these few minutes talking about this, Sulaiman and Omar. So, what does it mean? And seek help through patience and prayer. Sulaiman, you go first. If you don't know what to do when you're praying, you can just do what you know about praying. It's an interesting one. I don't know if I can agree if with you. But need help, if you need help, praying is the way of talking to Allah about the help. Very good. And I think so. Uh, what, what do you guys think at home? Who was right out of the two? Um, is it that through prayer that you get help from Allah and you be patient and Allah will help you? Or is it the other way around, inshallah? I think we can safely agree that you get help from Allah by being by doing your prayer and being mm. patient. What do you think, guys? Yeah, yeah. He wins. Yeah, well, that wasn't a competition. It was just to see your viewpoints. Right. Um, I think that's all we have time for, actually. That's all we have time for. We better get going. Inshallah, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Omar and Suleiman. Uh, I'm going to do the other way around. Thank you, Suleiman and Omar, for joining us on TV. Thank you for you guys at home for joining us as well. Inshallah, you're going to have a good week until we see you next time. Um, and yes, we look forward to another game. I look forward to another set of guests. And maybe these guys come back at some point. And Inshallah... Why As always, our out? WhatsApp underneath and our emails underneath. So send us any, 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 any feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, well, hope to see you then. I've been your host, Abul Hasnat, and I'll see you soon. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.